Now that we know how to navigate the viewport and set up our window layout, let's go through some settings that people don't usually mention in tutorials that I think are great. If you're not a tweaker, not the bad kind that is, then this video probably won't bring much, but I'm going to quickly go through some settings that might help certain people from different backgrounds, settings that confuse me at first, and settings that might be important for performance. Let me introduce myself, Insomnia from Unreal Talk, a division of Blender Tech, and welcome to another video. If you enjoy it or learn something, consider liking and subscribing for more Unreal, Blender, coding, and all sorts of other CG related videos. Lastly, don't forget our motto, create your way. So let's jump right in. With a project open, whether it be a template blank or an example project, it still doesn't matter yet. Just make sure you have the same window open as me. If you don't have a project open, you can always go File, New Project from a project that you have open, or in the Epic Games Launcher, you can always hit Launch on an engine version that you have installed. So let's get started. I'll be making some quick notes for users coming from Unity, but only those that are basic. And once those are out of the way, I'll rarely if ever be mentioning Unity in the rest of this video series. First of all, you'll notice that all my particle emitters, my candle flames, are, are moving in the viewport in real time. And you can even see the light moving on the ground a little bit. This is because I have, under this little arrow here in the corner of our viewport, a setting called Real Time Checked Off. As you can see, toggles Real Time Rendering in this viewport. If we uncheck that, everything stops rendering. This will save you a ton of performance. With that enabled, yes, it's nice to see, just for seeing how stuff's setting up without hitting play, but hitting play is so easy anyways. I usually have that turned off because it really can drag down your performance when you have a complicated scene such as this. Under your main settings here, we have an actual settings button. If you hit the little arrow next to it, we have a ton of settings, but what I want to go to is engine scalability settings. A lot of people, when they first start on Unreal, they say, why does my game look like crap? Everything is aliased. Every all my textures are all in low resolution. My models are blurry. What's going on? That's because sometimes projects are set to low you can see how immediately all my lighting goes away everything looks really everything looks really blurry and, and jagged that's because the settings are low and if I was to build the lighting it would be even worse I run it on epic and generally I don't have a problem even scenes like this with with uh, nearly a million triangles but you'll notice that my lighting isn't enabled anymore because I set it to low I would have to hit build or build lighting only to get that back. Just something to be aware of if you're if you're thinking that your project isn't looking as good as it should in Unreal. So how do we get to our actual settings? A word of warning, there are a million settings compared to Unity. It may seem daunting at first, so I'm just gonna go over some useful ones. So to find your settings, just simply go edit and down at configuration, we have editor preferences and project settings. I'm gonna click on editor preferences first. It'll bring up a tab just like this. If it's undocked like that, then just click and drag the tab and drag it onto the top menu bar so that we have it available. We'll do the same for project settings. As you can see, it opened up a tab. I'm just gonna drag it onto my top menu bar. You can do this with anything in Unreal. Makes it nice and easy to quickly go through tabs. Let's start with the editor preferences because obviously that's all around general settings. One of the first things that got me for the longest time is show friendly variable names. Now by default this is checked. I like to keep it unchecked because what this does is, let me open up a blueprint very quickly, this cube blueprint. You'll see if I create a new variable and I type it in camel case something like my variable name obviously it's it starts with the lowercase m it's in camel case now if i drag it in and get it you'll see it comes out exactly as i typed it if i go in and if i check show friendly variable names you'll notice that it gets rid of my camel casing altogether and it can make it can make blueprinting a little confusing if you come from a programming background if you don't do a lot of blueprinting if that's not a big deal if you're not familiar with C++ it's not a big deal but that's just something that I was like why are all my blueprints all typed like this when I'm typing them in camel case or in C++ standard you know my variable name and then you see how it, it does the exact same thing. When if I go back and uncheck that again, it's back exactly the way I like it. So just one of the first things that I always do. 
I just want to make mention of keyboard shortcuts. There are hotkeys for everything. I have not learned them yet. I've only learned some of the core ones, but you can find them here and you can set them here. That's for everything to do in the editor. I'm not going to go over that. Loading and saving. This is another big one. Load default level at startup. What this will do is it will load whatever you set as the default level in the project settings every time you open a project. That stock, I generally leave that checked off, but some people don't like that when they're working on many levels and they want uh, they want a different level loaded at startup, whatever level they set it to be. Next, restore open asset tabs on restart. This is unchecked by default. I like to have it checked because what this does is, let's say I close the editor down right now. The next time I open it, I'll still have these four tabs open, whereas if it checked off from from stock I would just have my main window open so I like to have that checked so that it opens up everything another setting monitor content directories I happen to have it unchecked here because I had a lot of content but it's nice to have it checked off so that any content that does get added to your directories whether it's from another project or from some content that you bought from somebody this will continually monitor your content directory in your project folder and import stuff automatically however it can be a resource hog so you can see it, it monitors um, your main content directory by default so big projects I leave that unchecked however if you notice that stuff isn't importing properly it's probably best to leave that checked especially if you're importing .us set files manually from other projects lastly on this page autosave autosave is great unreal 4 is still not the most stable it does crash a lot but it at stock settings, I think it's every 5 or 10 minutes, it gets quite annoying. I like to set it somewhere around 20 to 16 minutes, depending on the project I'm working on. And the warning in seconds. At stock, it's 10 seconds, and you think it may only go up to 30, cause it, or 20, sorry, because that's all the slider goes to. You can override it to anything. I set it to 90 or even 180 seconds, so I have lots of warning, and so it doesn't autosave on me accidentally. And then what I do, you can see we have these little asterisks in the corners of unsaved things and also in our content browser this little asterisk in the corner that means that this content has not been saved so if I hit control s or file save all those will go away and now everything is saved so I just like to do that often it's a good habit in any program autosave is great but it can get a little annoying at high frequency very quickly under miscellaneous we have show frame weight and memory if we enable this then under our main screen if we go back to show stats the one i showed you earlier you can now see in the top we have our frames per second and how much memory usage we're using and the number of objects in the scene however again show stats and real time can be quite performance demanding and i find that very distracting so i tend to turn it off Use less CPU and in the background and monitor editor performance. The tooltips say them all. I leave them checked off. That's default. And that will make that will make Unreal much uh, easier on your computer when it's in the background. Under viewports and level editor, I want to make mention of all these settings here under grid snapping. If I expand decimal grid sizes, you'll notice you have the stock snap sizes for moving objects in the X, Y, and Z directions. You can add your own in here. So if I click this arrow beside one and hit insert, I can add, sorry, right after that one. We'll change that one back to one. We can add 2.5 and now we have one right in the middle. If I hit insert right by 50 you'll see I can add 25 right there now when I go back to the editor I can not only snap in the stock settings but I now have 2.5 and 25 in addition to the standard ones very very useful and this this goes across all your your projects you can see I already had 2.5 2500 250 and 25 from a previous setup under blueprint editor draw midpoint arrows in blueprints now i don't like this i find it can be confusing but when you're first learning to blueprint this can be a useful setting you'll see should arrows indicating execution flow be drawn halfway along wires let me check that off to show you what that does under our blueprint notice these wires have these little arrows now that just shows you which way stuff is getting executed and now every time you play or you're watching it us uh, when you're watching the wires go along in their execution flow 
while you're while you're debugging you can see which direction they're flowing in because wires can get very very uh, spaghetti like very very quickly you can have wires going everywhere if you're not a neat freak like me so, but I like to turn those off because it's pretty obvious where they're pointed but it can be helpful sometimes for things like this when you're just learning which way is it going of course it can only go one direction but you might not know that at first Lastly, under graph editors, we have a bunch of colors. You can change colors in here if you don't like the way something looks. I find transform pin color can get a little confusing sometimes, but generally, it's not a big deal. Lastly, let's go to project settings. Under here, you can set up some information about your project. Maps and modes is what I want to go to, though. Game default map and editor startup map. So game default map, this is the map that will be loaded when no other map is told to load. Editor startup map, this is the map that will load when you start when you start your project up. So if you have a map that you always want to have loaded, say your main menu or your first level when you start your project, you want to select it in here. You see I have three different maps I can choose from. And so you can you can save that in here. You also have a server one, but we won't go into that. Also, game modes are under this setting. But we'll get more into that in in a different video. One important one under engine and input under action mappings. This is where you can set custom key mappings that are saved in an INI file. So if I expand this new one that I just press plus to create and I call it fire grenade launcher. And I bind that to, we'll go control shift F. Now when I go to a blueprint, I can right click and search fire grenade launcher. And this works just like a key press, pressed and released. Just like if I had actually used F, pressed and released. So that allows you to make custom inputs that can be set through an INI file or even in blueprints yourself. But we'll get into that later as well. And that is all I have for settings for you guys today. I think that should get you guys started. We'll get on with the next video later today or tomorrow. Thanks again for watching from the team here at Unreal Tech, a division of BlenderTech.com. If you enjoyed this video and learned something, please like and don't forget to subscribe for more videos. We're now on social media on the links on your screen. If you dislike this video for some reason, please tell us why so we can continually improve based on your community input. We also take requests, so we'll see you next time. Remember, create your way.